noble and kind. These were the words used by Pope Francis to describe his predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI, who died at the age of 95 on Saturday. Speaking at a New Year's Eve vigil in St. Peter's Basilica, Francis paid homage to the Pope Emeritus for his work and his faith. Pope Francis said, with emotion, we remember a person so noble, so kind. And we feel in our hearts so much gratitude, gratitude to God for having given him to the church and to the world, gratitude to him for all the good he has done and above all for his testimony of faith and prayer, especially in these last years of his retired life. Throughout the day, people here have been reacting to the news of the passing of the Pope Emeritus. I was approaching the square to pay my last respects, says this woman, even though I'm not a great believer. But he was a great philosopher and a great pope. One man said he leaves the memory of a pope who for the first time dared to retire. Remembrance services were held in Benedict's native Germany. Church bells sounded and flags were raised, including in his hometown of Marktel, to the southeast of the country, which Benedict had called his spiritual homeland. At least one person has been killed and 20 injured in the latest barrage of Russian strikes on Ukraine's capital, according to Kiev's mayor Vitaly Klitschko. Among the injured, 14 have been taken to hospital and six were treated at the scene. Ukraine's military commander said 12 missiles fired at Kiev were intercepted by air defenses. Meanwhile, the war is grinding on in the east. Ukrainian troops are battling hard in Crimea, while Russian forces are pounding Bakhmut in the Donetsk region, where President Vladimir Zelensky said was the scene of some of the war's fiercest fighting. Vladimir Putin claimed that Russia would never give in to the West's attempts to use Ukraine as a tool to destroy his country. In the Russian president's nine-minute New Year's message, he accused the West of provoking Moscow and said Russia was fighting in Ukraine to get true independence for its people. In her New Year's message, the head of the European Parliament, Roberta Metsola, said 2022 had been a difficult year for Europe. We were tasked to deal with the tailwinds of the pandemic, a perfect storm of climate change, inflation spiking, and energy supplies dwindling. All this against the backdrop of war on our continent. But if history, and this year especially, has shown us anything, it is that the European Union comes out of crises stronger and more united. And in 2023, we need to double down on protecting our values. Most importantly, we will continue to stand with Ukraine for a peace with liberty, peace with dignity, and peace with security. And despite a fresh wave of missile strikes across the country, Ukrainians are reuniting to welcome in the new year together. A show of hope for peace in 2023. France, the UK and Spain are among the latest countries to have announced restrictions on travellers from China one week before Beijing had planned to lift COVID travel restrictions after almost three years, international health authorities are concerned. In a tweet, the head of the World Health Organization has asked Chinese authorities for transparency and regular data sharing for a proper risk assessment. Chinese authorities met with WHO officials on Friday. A spokesman said China will strengthen communication with relevant countries, provide relevant service and guarantee for Chinese citizens outbound travel. The virus has swept through the country as China has turned its back on its strict zero COVID policy, which has long kept down cases. Some experts estimate that there may be as many as 9,000 daily deaths now nationwide.